Long, long ago, in a land where basketball flourished in the forest, a knight arrived, never to leave. His nobility and righteousness prevailed and contributed to all that was good around the kingdom of Gil. And finally, in the year of our Lord, 1990, the knight was named successor to the throne he had served so long and so well. Ah, this new king to what has become known as the Orange Express began his reign preaching of the family and tradition that he had become such a vital part of. And it remained very, very good. So great was this bond between the program and the players and the staff that it created a great excitement and notoriety. So great was this bond that it prompted an update of a vintage television series. Yes, the Orange Express had gone to sea, and the old stars looked amazingly like the staff they portrayed. Ah, the knight turned king himself, one James Anderson captained the vessel, with the able assistance from his medical staff led by Michael Sandego. Assistant coaches Andy McCloskey. And Freddie Boyd. Sorry about the do, Freddie. The Bon Voyage to the Anderson Reign began at home, actually, with three home games in Gill Coliseum. And what a start it was. After two week tests and exhibition, Jimmy Anderson's debut was, well, more of the same. OSU jumped on the Warriors of Marquette to lead 15 to five after five minutes and 27-12 after 10, and coasted to a 71-57 victory. Will Brantley grabbed team honors with 18 points and six rebounds. Another fast start against Arizona State as the Beavers scored 10 straight points to lead 21-8 after six minutes and coasted to an 87-64 victory over the Sun Devils. Gary Payton played with the Devils recording a school record 15 assists, scoring 21 points and helping force 23 ASU miscues with four steals of his own. OSU closed the book on 11 straight losses to Arizona by pounding the number two Wildcats for Jimmy Anderson's 500th victory as either an assistant or head coach with the Beavers. Peyton capped a week that earned him his second Sports Illustrated National Player of the Week honor as OSU led by as much as 28, 56 to 28, midway through the second half. Oh, how sweet it was. Despite erasing an early 10-point deficit and leading by six in the first half, Oregon State fell to the then nationally ranked Tigers of Memphis State, 78-72. Brantley led OSU scoring with 22, Gary Payton had 13 assists, and Teo Alabegovic contributed a career-high 11 rebounds. It was Peyton again at Tennessee as he showcased his talents in front of his easternmost live audience and eight NBA scouts with 39 points, nine assists, and three steals. Brantley chipped in 24 as the two produced one of the most outstanding backcourt efforts in Pac-10 history and a 96-90 overtime victory over the Volunteers. Gonzaga in Spokane next on the docket for the Beavers, and they coasted to an 82-61 victory. Peyton led all scorers and rebounders with 29 and 8, respectively. A mid-December evening in Gill Coliseum, and scoring records abound. Gary Payton, 48 points. Bo Kimball, 53. Loyola Marymount, 117. Oregon State, 113. Time to catch your breath as the Beavers end up on the short end of a record performance, and you can't say it wasn't entertaining. Ah, the captain wants timeout, and he gets it, slow down style from the Boise State Broncos. But the Broncos were totally outclassed in this one. The Beavers win at 76-42. Peyton's 15 paced balance scoring as OSU led 40-20 at the break and rolled from there.
OSU opened the Far West Classic with a lightning start and never looked back to spot the Terriers of Boston University. Final score 86-66. The Express cruised to a 41-27 halftime lead and cleaned the bench in the last 10 minutes. A rematch of a past semifinal in the Far West Classic against Louisiana Tech. And the Texters tried every guard at their disposal to slow down Gary Payton. The All-Americans still connected for 35 points, 12 assists, and the game-winning jumper in the key with four seconds to go. And the Beavers rallied from seven down with three minutes to play, and they win it 82-81. Oregon is next up the final, and OSU blew out to a 15-point advantage, but squandered it and saw the Ducks close to 69-68 with 44 seconds remaining. Peyton hit two free throws in the final ticks of the clock to secure the win and round out a 30-point, 13-assist game that clinched his unprecedented third straight tourney MVP honor. A 2-0 start to conference play in November, and now it's time to get back to the Pac-10 action. The Beavers did it at Stanford in overtime fashion, 77-76 over the Cardinal. Start the tape rolling. Peyton again ran roughshod over an opponent. His line, 36 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, and 5 steals. Peyton's finale in Berkeley featured another OSU comeback. The Beavers were down 45-35 with 10 minutes to go when Peyton led the charge to win with an 11-4 run in the final three minutes. Final 64-58 over the Golden Bears. Though he repeated his 30-point performance of an early duck game, Peyton watched as Alan Celestine fed Scott Haskin for the winning reverse layup with only two seconds remaining in Mac court. Peyton had scored 10 straight points prior to the winner, and the Beavers win in Mac Court once again, 69-67. The next opponent, the Cougars, back in home sweet home, Gill Coliseum. This wasn't as easy as the score indicated. The Beavers win at 79-64, but the Cougars clawed their way out of a couple of 10-point deficits and were within four points with seven minutes to go. Washington up next, bench heroes Alan Celestine and Bob Cavill were perfect from the field. They also contributed five rebounds and six assists in carrying the Beavers through a rugged second half. The offense got back on track in Los Angeles as six Beavers hit double figures including Gary Payton's 28. Celestine had a career-high 14 points as OSU's lone scorer off the bench and the Beavers win it in the sports arena over the Trojans 92-82. A solid first half and a Payton three after the break staked OSU to a 47-40 lead in Pauley over the Bruins, but the wheels came off soon after. Payton's fourth foul with 13 minutes remaining in a 53-53 tie changed the complexion of the contest and the Bruins dashed out to snap OSU's 10-game winning streak 94-80. The Bay Area schools were easy prey for a dad's weekend at Gill Coliseum. 98-81 victims were the California Bears. The Beavers back on track with one of their best halves of the year. The Express led 51-37 at the half. Cal only scored one bucket in the first six and a half minutes. Stanford up next. Earl Martin put together one of his best weekends as a Beaver, contributing 22 points to this one as OSU jumped out early again, leading 47-29 at the half. Peyton, who had 32 points in a second straight 10 assist game, became the NCAA's third leading career assist man. Don Munson has to be thinking that it just wasn't meant to be. And maybe it isn't. Maybe those Beavers should always beat the Ducks in Gill Coliseum. The Orange Express made it three in a row as Peyton connected for his third straight 30 against the feathered foul. ESPN and Sports Illustrated picked a very untimely opportunity to showcase Gary Payton. This wasn't a case of the Huskies outplaying Oregon State. It was not a night for anyone. OSU was just more due for a forgettable performance. <laughs>